In 330 AD, the Emperor Constantine transferred his capital from Rome to a newly constructed city he named after himself in present-day Turkey. The Roman Empire and its ancient traditions continued but under a new guise. The empire slowly oriented itself toward Greek, not Western, art, not Western art and culture, adopted orthodoxy, not Catholicism as its religion. and communicated in the greek not in not the latin language constantinople's walls were finally breached in 1453 by the ottoman turks bringing a definitive end of byzantium or the eastern roman empire after more than a millennium due to the capital's transfer in the 4th century italy was in disarray at the time of today's saint in the 5th century Weeds pushed through the cracked marble of Rome's ruined temples. The Western emperors, more warlords than kings, migrated back and forth throughout the 400s between disintegrating Rome and a newly fortified city on the Adriatic Sea. It was Imperial Ravenna, Byzantium's sole toehold in Italy. It was a jewel box of a city sparkling with mosaics. Ravenna throughout the 400s and 500s as a mini Constantinople Byzantine to its fingertips basking in the glow of imperial splendor and abuzz with the construction of palaces churches and mausoleums and it was of vibrant 5th century Ravenna that Saint Peter Chrysologos was appointed archbishop in about 425 AD he served the city well for the next 25 years Saint Peter preached his first episcopal homily to the empress and is depicted in a contemporary mosaic alongside of her and the emperor providing Peter mingled with the elites and enjoyed their support Peter developed a reputation as a skilled preacher 176 of his sermons still survive in later centuries Peter would be given the moniker Chrysologos the golden worded in recognition of his oratorical skill The name may also have been given by western theologians to purposefully rival the eastern world's famous Saint John Chrysostom, the Golden Mouth. Apart from his homilies, the only surviving document of Peter's is a letter he wrote to Eutychus, a central figure in the complex and sometimes vicious Christological and Marian debates of the 5th century. Peter vigorously supported Pope Saint Leo the Great's teaching on the incarnation. while Eutychus and others in the east had drifted in a monophysitism or versions of it monophysitism held that christ possessed a mixed nature which mingled both human and divine elements the council of chalcedon in 451 would formally adopt leo's teaching condemn monophysitism and teach forever and always that a fully divine nature and a fully human nature dwelled inside the one person of Jesus Christ without confusion commingling or alteration this complex reality called the hypostatic union is precisely what gives such meaning color and richness to all that Christ said and did during the burning theological controversies preceding chalcedon just after pope leo clarified orthodox teaching on Christ one person and two natures Chrysologus wrote his letter to the confused Eutychus. Concisely and charitably, Chrysologus encouraged the heretic to submit to the bishop of Rome. Obediently heed these matters which the most blessed pope of the city of Rome has written, because blessed Peter, who lives and presides in his own see, proffers the truth of faith to those who seek it. We cannot decide upon cases of faith without the harmonious agreement of the bishop of Rome. Peter's letter proves just how early and widespread Christianity understood that the bishop of Rome was the one hub where all Christianity's many spokes united. Although much is known of Peter's time and place, both theologically and culturally, few details remain of his life or ministry apart from his sermons. These sermons show rhetorical flair in expounding on the incarnation. 
Mary's role in mankind's redemption and in the need for penance and conversion, St. Peter's golden words impress the populace of a golden city for decades. We can assume that our saint lived as elegantly as he preached. St. Peter Chrysologos was proclaimed a doctor of the church in 1729. Let us pray. May all priests and deacons be graced with your passion, clarity and elegance, St. Peter. Help the faithful who seek the fullness of the word of God to find him and aid those who are distracted and apathetic to pay heed to God's interventions in their lives.